the effort was better, the goaltending, and the end result was not. The Wild are 0-3 after losing to Colorado 6-3, and everybody is frustrated. So let's talk it out on today's episode of Locked on Wild. You're locked on Wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to yet another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast, part of the Locked On Sports Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Wild your first listen each and every day. And just as a reminder, Locked On Wild is free and available wherever you listen to your podcasts. On today's episode of Locked On Wild, we recap a 6-3 to three loss for the Wild to the Colorado Avalanche to drop them to 0-3 on the season. We talk about continued atrocious goaltending. We discuss the penalties that killed opportunities for the Wild to get back into this game. And we look at the facts. and We face facts about where this team is at through three games. My name is Seth Topal, your daily Minnesota Wild insider. And we're just going to speak frankly in this one, I think, because, yes, it is game three of 82, but we got what we were looking for in a better effort from the wild in this one tonight. And uh, we saw a lot of players that were more committed to the defensive end, like this team needed to be. The goaltending didn't match it. And another game in which the wild faced an opposing goalie that was better than Cal Peterson in uh, Anton Gorgiev, but didn't really do much to stop the Wild from winning this game. This was a very winnable one for the Minnesota Wilds, but a game in which they never led, a game in which the Wilds shot themselves in the foot and negated the ability for them to utilize their greatest asset so far this season, which has been power play scoring. And it all leads to a team at 0-3 that is, it's starting to get frustrating. Fans have already been there. And this is a team that just, there has to be drastic improvement in a very key area for a team that had postseason expectations coming into the season. I thought Philip Gustafson had some great saves tonight. I thought he did some good things in the net. I thought he was a more calming presence than Marc-Andre Fleury. But at the absolute basic level, the lowest level of goaltending, The goals that he gave up in particular were unacceptable. The knuckle puck, bouncing puck that he let trickle in between his legs out of position ended up being tapped in for a goal. The backhander that trudged through the crease in front of the net. You have to make those saves as a goalie. I understand we can look at the other goals that were allowed by this team and ask, where's the help? Where is the help defensively in trying to make sure that the Avalanche don't just continue to get the opportunities they're looking for? I understand that. But through three games... This has been bottom five, if we're being generous, goaltending that this team has received from Marc-Andre Fleury and from Philip Gustafson, and that is not acceptable. I understand the 
things that continue to be pointed to that have led to this team not playing as well as they did to start the season. I will grant you Cam Talbot. And we can even we can even go with revisionist history here. If Cam Talbot is here, maybe he doesn't get injured and maybe he's playing and maybe the goaltending is better than what we have received so far from Flurry and from Gustafson. I'll grant you that. Kevin Fiala is not fixing a single thing that is wrong with this team right now. So I, I do not accept that argument that I have seen from fans that Kevin Fiala would fix this. He would not fix what is wrong with this team right now. I will hear arguments on Cam Talbot, but we can't do anything about that. The players that are on this roster right now have to get better, and they have to get a lot better than we've seen over these first three games. If they can't get it done, this team is in serious trouble. And so, yes, we're three games in. The hope is that a lot of these issues will correct and that we're seeing the absolute bottom of the barrel right now by this these goalies. And that there will be that they're not, you know, they're not all-star level goalies. They're not this bad either, that they fall somewhere in between. That's the hope. But if we have had Mark Andre Fleury at the end of his career put on this roster, that's a problem. There is a that is a large problem for this team. And so, yes, it's three games in, but we got what we wanted. We got the improved effort from the team in front tonight. And we're not getting even the basic level of saves right now. And that is incredibly frustrating and is a cause for concern for this team, even just three games into the season. So frustrating that yet another winnable game goes by the wayside. And, you know, 0-3 with a Vancouver team that is very good, even though their record would indicate opposite coming in. And then a five-game road trip after that to end the month of October. It does not get any easier. And 0-3 to start is not what you want to do to start the season. So, yes, it's frustrating. The goaltending has to improve. And so we will see on Thursday if that happens. I was encouraged by the effort by the team in front, but they were not given any opportunity to try to win this game because the basic level saves are difficult right now. So 0-3 to, uh, to start the season, 20 goals allowed in three games, 12 goals scored, which should be enough through three games that would rank near the top in the NHL. And this team is 0-3. So it's frustrating, but... We're just we're gonna have to continue to try to figure this out. Um, I, I want to talk about a couple of other things because I think there was a very distinct turning point for this game, uh, a couple of them, in fact, uh, because despite the bad goaltending again, um, this team was right in it to the end and had a couple of chances to tie this game that could have potentially led to a different outcome. So we'll talk about those turning points. As we continue today's episode of Locked on Wild, after this. If you haven't tried Built Bar Puffs yet, you're depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? Built has come up with yet another new flavor. Are you ready for delicious, indulgent cookie dough covered in chocolate? Built has done it once again. Allow me to introduce you to your new favorite Built Bar. That is Cookie Dough Chunk Puffs. They're light and have a chewy texture, plus real cookie dough chunks. And of course, they are covered in 100% real chocolate. And 
they're healthy for you too. Cookie dough chunk puffs are only 160 calories and they have a whopping 15 grams of protein in them. And like all built bars, the new cookie dough chunk puff is covered in 100% real chocolate, which means they are both healthy and taste great. Chocolate covered cookie dough with a light, fluffy texture, and you absolutely can't go wrong with that. You're going to want to make sure you don't miss out on these delicious puffs. So run, don't walk, run to built.com. And make sure to snag yourself a box for you and the family. It'll be the perfect treat for you to enjoy. Or you can just take the entire box. I would not oppose that move at all. But make sure you head to built.com. And when you do, use the promo code LOCKDOWN15 to get 15% off your order. Again, use the promo code LOCKDOWN15 for 15% off at built.com. Continuing today's episode of Lockdown Wild. And once again, thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. Uh, Lockdown Wild listeners, along with our show, you can find all the other Locked On Sports Minnesota podcasts on Roku and Amazon Fire TV as part of Locked On Sports Minnesota. More great local sports coverage 24 7 and absolutely free of charge. So make sure to download the Locked On Sports Minnesota app today on Roku and Amazon Fire TV. Minnesota Wilder 0-3 now on the season, and uh, the issues continue to compound, goaltending, but there were a couple points in this game in which the Wild had the opportunity to either tie or potentially take the lead. I'll start with the delayed penalty by the Avalanche. So the Avalanche get called for a penalty. I believe it was... I believe it was Kirill Kaprizov getting tripped on the ice, but I'm not entirely sure. What I do remember is Matt Boldy had possession of the puck. The Wild were going to try to use this as a potential power play before the power play opportunity. So Boldy, to his credit, pulls it back a little bit to allow the Wild the opportunity to get some fresh skaters out on the ice. The Wilds take a too many men on the ice penalty by putting six skaters out on the ice in a four-on-four situation. These are the problems that happen when you as a team go in a rough patch and members of the team try to do too much to get the team out of it. The Minnesota Wild power play is a top five unit in the NHL right now. And based off of what we've seen through three games, I see no reason to believe that that won't continue. And so, yes, I understand trying to use the delayed penalty as an opportunity to get a five on four before the actual power play. I I get that. I understand that. But... You cannot afford to take that kind of a penalty by not having the wherewithal to know what the situation is on the ice and to know who can and who cannot be on the ice. That wasted an opportunity for the Wild to get that top power play unit back on the ice for potential to score yet another power play goal. And that was one of the turning points in this game because that just it felt like one that the Wild were not going to be able to overcome. And then you have the shorthanded opportunity by Freddie Goudreau, in which they get Gorgiev out of the crease, and Freddie Goudreau cannot get the potential tying goal to go with nobody in the crease. And that has been a problem as well, is it just, it seems like this wild team through these first three games just has not gotten any bounce to go their way. Look at the first goal tonight as a perfect example of this. The double doink off of Sam Steele and off of an Avs player that kicks over the head of Philip Gustafson and just happens to fall into the net to give the Avalanche the lead. One of the most unlucky goals I've ever seen. 
that's just how it's going right now is all of the unlucky bounces are going the wrong way for this team. But it's not only the the bonehead penalties, it's the retaliatory penalties. Jewel Erickson had a great game tonight. Jewel Erickson also drew a penalty, and it was one that I believe the Avalanche scored on. Drew a penalty because of some extracurriculars got tangled up with Kale McCarr in front of the net, ended up uh, getting knocked down behind the net, frustrated there was no penalty, so he takes exception to it and ends up going after McCarr, gets called for a penalty, and the Avalanche score. That is another issue for this team through the first three games of the year. It's just, and we are seeing it play out in front of us. All of these things are by themselves, maybe not as big of a problem. You could argue that bad defense and bad goaltending, one or the other, can be a problem. But every one of these things compacting and being problems at once because of how frustrated players are at how things have gone to start the season. It's an avalanche right now. Forgive the pun. It's an avalanche. It's just a complete avalanche of everything going wrong so far to start the year. And I I just, I don't know at this point, you know, it's, the hope is that it's it's going to be corrected, but as as positive as this show tends to try to be and more looking to fix problems than just throw our hands up and say there's just a lot going wrong. It is I think the last two games are the most frustrating part of it. You can say what you want about what happened opening night against the Rangers. It's a great team. It's possible to overlook that one game as an anomaly. But three consecutive games of similar problems is when things start to become a pattern. And it's, I just, I don't know. It's... It's incredibly frustrating. And so at some point you just kind of scratch your head and hope that things will turn around. And that's really all you can go with going forward. But just it's it's a lot of different things that are compounding together as uh, as real problems for this team. Now, it's it's overshadowing some good. And we can continue to hit on the points that um, are areas that this team is is doing well in. And so we'll we'll try as we have when things aren't going well to at least leave you with a little bit of a positive. Uh, and so we'll uh, we'll talk about some of the things that have gone well through the first three games uh, as we finish today's episode of Locked on Wilds after this. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. And uh, just a reminder for Locked on Wild listeners, you can find our show as well as the other Locked on Sports Minnesota podcasts available on Roku and Amazon Fire TV as part of Locked on Sports Minnesota. More great local sports coverage 24-7 and absolutely free of charge. So make sure you check out the Locked on Sports Minnesota app today on Roku and Amazon Fire. TV. I think it's safe to say through four, uh, three games that we have seen. I think we are seeing that this team has put Kalen Addison in a great spot to succeed. He continues to just look so at home on that top power play unit. He, uh, based on the numbers, he had three assists, five shots. He played 18 minutes, and 
continued to uh, continue to help lead that uh, that top power play unit that has not shown any semblance of giving up any of those top numbers. I mean, you look at Addison, you look at Zuccarello, Kaprizov, uh, Erickson Eck, and Boldy, and those guys played of the power play time that the Wild actually had. Uh, they played almost 90% of it. And so he's done great in that role. And, you know, defensively, the numbers don't look great, but I, I think we can rest assured that the Wild have put him in a spot and he has answered the bell and has performed well enough that he's not in any, he's not in any jeopardy of losing any of what he is doing so far to start this season. And it were to the point a few games into the season where you look at like what comes next with this team after this season and beyond. And he is definitely squarely in that mix. Um, I'm, I have been a hundred percent satisfied with what we've seen uh, from Kalen so far this season. We saw a ton of, roster juggling, line changes. Uh, We're going to spend an entire episode, don't worry, we're going to spend an entire episode here before Thursday talking about the Marco Rossi thing. So uh, I'm going to mention it, but we will will discuss it at length later this week. Um, We saw a lot of roster juggling. Marco Rossi was scratched tonight. I liked what Tyson Jost brought to that mix on that top line. Defensively, the numbers are not good for any of the lines, really, that played. But Jost, as the center for Kaprizov and Zuccarello, did what he did on the line with Felino and Erickson Eck. He battled for pucks. He gave the team some opportunities to, uh, to potentially score. He recorded, I think he recorded one assist in this one tonight, but um, he had, he he set the team up with good opportunities while he was out there on the ice. And so whether his home ends up being on the Boldy line, whether it ends up that he maybe takes over as center for now between Kaprizov and Zuccarello, I think he will fit in wherever he's at. Cause he just, he is just outworking people right now. And that, with that being an issue for parts of this wild team so far, that's enough at this point to, uh, to stand out amongst some of his other teammates. So I thought Jost was good again. I liked what we saw from him. You look at Matt Boldy and Kirill Kaprizov and what they are doing despite this start. And we are not seeing the slow start for Kirill to start the season with five points already in three games. Uh, Boldy continues to be a huge part of this team and just is, is grinding and working absolutely amongst one of the hardest working players on this team right now. I thought it was a better game for Ryan Hartman. He still looks frustrated out there and you know, he had a couple of couple of questionable turnovers again in this one. Um so it's I think as Dean said in the post game, it was a step in the right direction, but as I'm going to add to that a step in the right direction does not win you a game. And that's why we're all in three. Now we'll look a little more in depth at the Vancouver Canucks uh, before Thursday's game as well. But I just want to kind of tee something up for you that, um, that I'll leave you with to finish off today's episode. The Vancouver Canucks in, uh, in a tweet that, passed my eye as uh, as I was scrolling through the uh, the Twitter universe here this evening. The Vancouver Canucks have become the first team in NHL history. Think about that. First team in NHL history 
to lose each of their first three games of a season while blowing a multi-goal lead in each contest. So as bad as things have gone for the Wild so far, there are other teams that are in bad spots. But if the Wild think on Thursday they can just show up, they're going to get routed. They have to bring it, even against the uh, Vancouver Canucks, who are off to a bad start this season because they can't hold a lead. The Wild are off to a bad start because they haven't had one and because their goaltending is bad. So if they if they fall behind again by three, maybe they can have a better chance to get back into it, but it's gut check time for this team. Three games into the season, they got to get it figured out um, so that uh, they can get back on track because at some point this season, if this continues, this team is teetering on the brink of being between a playoff team and a team that has to take a step back because of what they're also dealing with, with the salary cap, the buyouts to Zach Parise and Ryan Suter. And so if they win, they can kind of get to where they're not peering over the edge of the plank. But if this continues, there will come a point where they just have to face facts. And thankfully, we're not necessarily at that point right now, but it'll, if this current play continues it'll get here before we know it but all we can do is move on to thursday as bill belichick said we're on to we're on to vancouver we're on to vancouver on thursday so we'll have a lot for you here throughout the week to gear up for thursday's game we'll look at the rossi situation we'll look at vancouver to see what sorts of things they will do or not do against the Wild on Thursday. So the content's not going to stop just because the team starts the season 0-3. So make sure that you are following along with us every step of the way by following Locked on Wild on your favorite podcast platforms. Also subscribe on YouTube. Make sure you turn the notifications on so you don't miss out on any of our videos throughout the entirety of the season. We are keeping you up to date with new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked on Sports Podcast Network.